well, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. I know it's been a while since I've recorded anything, and uh, I'm sort of playing catch up with all the news that's happening out there in the esports world. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics. I'm sure it's one of your favorite topics, too. I'm going to be talking about Overwatch. And there's been a few kind of news stories and things that have emerged uh, just over the past couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm going to try and talk about them and contextualize them a little bit. If you're an Overwatch fan, if you're on the competitive Overwatch subreddit, if you're one of the same 12 names I see incessantly jabbering about me and how everything I say is made up and ridiculous and you falsify shit that I've said about Overwatch and, you know, whatever. Good to see you again. No need to submit this to Reddit. It's not really for you guys. Um, it's more for the people who perhaps haven't been keeping an eye on what has been going on. And I know you guys fucking... That definitely doesn't apply to you. You, you live this shit. So, um... Anyway, let's start by sort of talking about one of the things that came to the prominence, and that is this war on words that Overwatch has been having. There's been a lot of people that have kind of talked uh, in videos and stuff about this, about how social justice warriors are ruining Overwatch and all of this. Uh, my take has always kind of been that it seems to be a very profound rejection of kind of internet culture, and deliberately it odds with the type of audience I think you should probably look to sustain if you're going to be a successful esport. Indeed, I can't think of another esports title or developer that has gone to these sort of extremes in terms of censoring words in game, um, stamping a very clear political message uh, you know, into their game with things like, you know, you hear stories about people who've got the word Trump in their name being banned from playing Overwatch and other ridiculous things. I, 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 the stories that have kind of come out recently make me wonder about what kind of demographic they're skewing towards. And this is the first uh, thing. It's condensed in a, a Reddit post um, on the competitive, oh, actually, no, the official Overwatch uh, subreddit. Um, and what they're talking about here is words that are banned in the chat and this became apparent sort of during contenders i believe it was uh that they were banning very innocuous words from being used in in chat now we obviously know we had the brouhaha with xqc with the uh, tryhard uh, emote and everything else and overwatch uh, in the overwatch channel certain emotes are banned from being used in case they're used in a, in a uh, manner that is deemed to be racially insensitive uh, but here the words that are banned on the list are really bizarre honestly uh it, it started becoming apparent that when people were making bad plays or something funny happened in game people were trying to type lmao which of course stands for laughing my ass off and it was banned um the word climax was banned that's very strange to me i mean lmao is is weird climax is especially weird because the the meaning the sexual meaning of the word climax is like it's secondary or tertiary meaning it doesn't it's not even the primary reason why you would use that word sucks so you can't say that someone or something sucks now the word poop uh, which, I mean, there's a kid's book called Every Everybody Poops to sort of allay fears uh, of, uh, of young children when they're potty training and toilet training for the first time. Uh, so, again, this is what I mean about the demographic. Like, what are we really going for with Overwatch? By You know, what are we saying about it by sort of banning these words? And uh, it didn't really stop there e either. There was um, more, I guess, obvious things based on what's happened uh, of late. Uh, in typing Munker S, which, of course, is the, you know, sweating uh, Pepe. Well, we, we know that all Pepe's are banned. Any frog uh, that looks to be vaguely Pepe-esque. You know, they're taking away the signs. They're telling players who play in the league you can't tweet out any memes. Uh, they've told commentators not to say feels good man or feels bad man. So, I guess uh, Munker S, it was kind of... Um, you know, inevitable really that it would fall by the wayside and be another one of these terms that has been banned by uh, the Overwatch League. But then it gets a little bit more bizarre. Also, um, during Contenders, it came to pass that uh, one of the uh, one of the people 
competing in, in, in the competition, Fusion University, they got their jerseys banned. And you're like, okay, well, um, there must be something about this jersey. I'll, I'll bring up the news report from over at Dot Esports, and you can, uh, by Nicole Carpenter, you can tell me if you can uh, spot the problem. Um, you can see all handsome chaps. All looking great. Uh, some incredible hairstyles there. I'm envious. Uh, but but Fusion University, well, their their jerseys were banned because it says "fu," which obviously I suppose could mean "fuck you" if if you know if you think about it. So yes, "fu." Um, they apparently what happened was uh, moments before they were due to compete, they were told that their jerseys were not suitable uh, uh and that they had to be uh just had to, they'd have to wear something else i think if i remember rightly yeah they came to the stage in pretty much just plain black t-shirts and not the official jerseys that their institution uh wanted to wear so um really strange that that happened uh, especially when you consider some other things um, such as for example McCree uh, this is something that was brought up um, it says uh, BAMF on his belt bu buckle that means badass motherfucker but um, I imagine that'll eventually get phased out we've seen them sort of uh, retcon things based on uh, things that are suddenly considered to be offensive or trend we've seen that occur so uh, maybe mccree won't be such a badass motherfucker for very long now this is kind of obvious you know it's been the subject of much debate in in the overwatch community i guess um i can understand it from a perspective of you don't want advertisers to maybe stray away from from the league but nobody has complained about any of these things. Nobody was saying, oh my God, LMAO, it's, it's a terrible time. Sucks, is homophobic. Nobody kicked up a stink in the first instance. And it's almost as if now Blizzard are kind of trying to preemptively neutralize any controversy before it happens, which seems a bit heavy-handed to me. Now, also on top of that, you've got to think about this. Like when you watch other live sports events on stream which you know i do uh, because of the line of work i'm in um anything that has like i have never seen lmao banned from a, a, a chat it's it's there i mean anybody who watched the baseball on facebook will tell you so there was some pretty you know there was some pretty heinous stuff getting typed um it, it's it, it was it's really strange and i think it's kind of isolating the western audience a little bit and some of them are starting to get this perception that now maybe it is kind of a, a game for children uh and and people are starting to move away you know there's no data that we can obtain because blizzard will will not release it to sort of st substantiate the gut feeling that fewer people are playing the game for balance reasons um you know, but but queue times are definitely up. That's a observable complaint that you see on social media. And uh, pros are complaining about how they don't like to have to practice and grind out in, in ranked anymore. And they wish they had their own kind of closed off way to play with their, their friends and colleagues and not have to kind of grind up their rank with the general public. There's a lot of feeling about actually just playing the game is becoming a chore. And when you couple into that, well, if I want to watch a game and blow off some steam and I can't even type, haha, that sucks in chat, I might be less inclined to, to want to watch and interact. Now, maybe that's clutching at straws. Uh, perhaps you'll, you'll uh, I'm sure many of you will say, oh, Richard, you've, you've always had it in for Overwatch and, um, you know, obviously... Uh, you, you would love this to be true. Uh, but um, I want to talk about the global market and, and why I think Blizzard definitely should tread with a bit more caution when it comes to isolating the Western audience that they've got. So it's no secret that Overwatch is down in Korea. Um, actually, 
recently it, it slipped to I think yeah the fourth overall most popular game in PC banks. Now anybody who knows how you measure the success and popularity of a game in South Korea, you basically go to the LAN cafes, which are called PC banks, and you see which games are popular. But that's a very good way of measuring the current uh, zeitgeist. And there's a website which you can all go and do this on. It's called uh, it's I think it's going to be Game Metrics. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's Game Metrics. Um, which shows you the statistics and i'm hoping it's going to come up here um so you can see it um but you never know with um x split and korean stuff and here it is now you can take my word for it and that there is overwatch um in korean and uh, it's uh, only got a 7.6 percent share being played currently in the PC banks behind League of Legends with 26.17%. That's a climber. And PUBG, which is up to a whopping 34.15%. Always going to be well represented. Korean company, you know, South Korea. Uh, but um, the, the I guess the thing that should be concerning is this is down again. Now, it was as high as a 20% share in January last year. It was about at about 9% two three weeks ago and it's dropped again and at one point it was lower than that as the fifa online which is now back into fourth le leapt above it and overwatch was down to the fourth most popular game which was an all-time low um and jeff kaplan had kind of put a video out uh, which i'll just bring up it'll it'll probably auto play it's just to show you it exists uh they this is before uh fifa online was released jeff kaplan put out a video where they specifically addressed the Korean community saying how important the South Korean community was to Overwatch, how people look at South Korea and basically think it's the center of the gaming world. Very flattering to Korean gamers. I, I, I don't know if it's too little, too late, honestly, to kind of kickstart growth in that region. I mean, it, it is a great esports region, no doubt about it. It's one of the most important regions to have a foothold in if you want to be a serious esports title, I would argue. And it's definitely been slipping for blizzard i think it's going to continue to slip honestly um due to you know new games coming out new promotions and just a general distaste i mean certainly from the view of the overwatch league it's not really a lot for south korean fans to sort of get behind when you consider the original plan was to have multiple korean teams from different regions and because of clashes with kespa this got scaled down to just the one team which is kind of controlled by uh, a blizzard business partner i i think they certainly would have enjoyed a much bigger share in in, in the pc land cafe market uh had the, that come to pass it's even worse in china uh in in china it, they have a 0 0.3 percent share in chinese land cafes and just to show you the graph um there you go you can see that it's over there in the 0.3s uh meanwhile of course uh, PUBG and League of Legends continue to dominate that particular region. So when you take this into consideration, this decline in these huge gaming markets, when you consider the rise of like Battle Royale games, the enduring charm of League of Legends in Korea and China, um, really Overwatch in those areas has been a bit of a flop. And these, are, these would be worrying times for a supposedly global league which just hold that in mind because we're going to come to that in a moment so look you're going to say richard how are you linking them banning words and and declining in another area well again this is what why i'm, I'm kind of linking it i think isolating a western audience now based on silly little things like banning words and and kind of presenting this idea that you know if you're a, a slightly more mature kind of person you're not welcome. I think it's a bad business strategy, honestly, because they certainly are going to need the numbers moving forward. I'll move on to the viewership numbers in the o Overwatch League. And again, you have to understand that how, how the esports pyramid works, right, is that the more people that come in at the bottom, players, casuals, the more people you eventually filter up to the top, um, which is the serious esports players, people who will view, view in the next 
uh, kind of rung of the ladder, then the professionals that play the game, that encourage the viewership, right up to the stars. And that's kind of how the esports pyramid works. I mean, esports is a business model more than it is a phenomenon. I mean, competitive gaming exists in many forms. When we talk about esports, we're talking about a business model, effectively. And I and I, I think what Overwatch certainly needs to be cognizant of is if you're losing view, if you're losing players in these areas, these huge areas that if you can just crack the market, you'll end up like League of Legends having these you know unnaturally high uh, viewers from all over the world. You know, to to kind of then take your core audience, which is it's always been the English speaking stream that's had the highest viewing numbers, to then start to chip away at that. Not a good plan. Um, let's take a look at these viewing numbers as reported in the Esports Observer. And on the Esports Observer publication I've talked about in the past, one thing they certainly do is incredibly fine work you know, monitoring and looking at the business side of esports. That's primarily its goal. They actually sell you know, intelligence and, and uh, reports that you can get in white papers. Uh, you can add to your a trolley here. They take all that very seriously. And they've been monitoring the viewership. And last week, they put something out, which I retweeted to my uh, loyal followers. And you can see here, look, uh, it, it's a, the, the a graph that shows the viewership. Uh, and this is stage four, which is where we're at now. And you can see it was the lowest opening of any stage in o Overwatch League's history. The lowest average viewers, uh, the lowest total hours watched. And total hours watched is a... Uh, in many ways to a lot of people a lot of businesses in esports a lot of sponsors it's actually a much more important metric than peak viewership that's uh, that's the sexy one because it's like how many how many hours people have the potential to see your brand a lot of people actually like that now total hours viewed and that's uh down as well and you can see here the max concurrent viewership on the main channel is down to its lowest Point. Now, just before I sat down to record this, they'd actually released their weekly uh, update on these numbers. So in the interests of, you know, kind of diffusing people going, oh, you didn't use the new one, no, because the new one has the headline that it rallied. Okay, well, let's look at the new one. And here we go. Uh, you can see it is still the lowest of any of the stages uh, that it's had. It has a substantial drop in total hours watched, and it has uh, a substantial drop in max concurrent viewership. So even though it's rallied, uh, this is still a league that's in decline. Now, it'll rally by the end for the playoffs, and I imagine we'll probably see record viewership uh, for when sort of season one uh, concludes and everyone will sort of say this is okay but this is your bread and butter and this is what i've always talked about that it's not what you do on day one it's not what you do on week one it's not what you do on month one it's where are you at the end of year one what you know do people have fatigue towards your product and as i said a separate issue people aren't enjoying the game right now the current meta people have said there's fundamental balance issues within the game People aren't, therefore, wanting to watch the game as much. People want to engage and have fun when they watch the game. That's being stifled. This creates an atmosphere where people, I do think, are getting a little bit fatigued, honestly, with Overwatch. Now, despite these numbers, interestingly enough, Blizzard sort of haven't addressed this. And they're kind of continuing to say, everything's fine. Everything's perfectly fine. We're banning all the words. Viewership's down. Le less hours are watched. Um, queue times are up. Uh, PC bang shares. These are all, you know, the, holistically as a picture, this shows you that the game is not growing at best. I mean, that would be the best interpretation of it. Um, but they've actually put something out basically saying, no, there will be expansion slots. Now, if we go right back to the start of the month, this was reported by the almighty uh, Jacob Wolf, uh, who's made Overwatch very much his beat, broke some of the biggest stories there. Never been, I never had a stinker, never been proven to sort of be inaccurate in his reporting in that area. And look, there it is. Apparently now, sources are saying $30 million to $60 million buyouts for the six expansion slots that they want to put in for the next year. And 
when you consider that there's been a lot of misrepresentation about this $20 million number, I've talked about this a lot publicly, uh, no one ever seems to pick up on it, but actually how much has been paid of these $20 million, I'll tell you, there's some franchises that certainly haven't paid uh, close to anything to come into the league because of their name value and people can you know make of that what they will i'll let journalists dig into that if they want but you can see here they are basically sort of representing that because it has exceeded expectations that's a phrase you're going to hear a lot from blizzard it's exceeded expectations uh, that now they're going to increase the uh, prices as they look to expand but crucially when they clarified what these expansion, uh, these six expansion leagues would look like and where they would be, they didn't talk about the areas. And again, it's meant to be a global league, but it's a global league that seems to be very NA centric at the moment. And you can see here, they want to get into Berlin. Well, I mean, you know, sure, the Berlin. Is a, is a bit of an esports hub as well. League of Legends certainly made that the case. But you can see here, this is Activision Blizzard Esports League CEO Pete Velastelica, uh, who says that um, they want to go, go into some Scandinavian regions. And it's interesting, isn't it, that these are the areas being talked about. We're not talking about China. We're not talking about South Korea. We're talking about Europe, and we're talking about cities that already have... Uh, sports teams and sports stadiums and sporting infrastructure more so actually than than being known for esports uh makes me wonder about this whole thing they want to do with stadiums now certainly i'll tell you we know that there's major sporting organizations in paris in berlin in holland that have already put money into having esports organizations these will be the venture capitalist groups that they're talking to as kind of sports teams look to expand into esports and sort of control that share of of the market through strategic partnerships but the money the money they're talking about is just not with with the game in its current state and all of the metrics i've just shown you it's not a fucking sensible investment for 60 million i mean shit if it was true that 20 mil was good money and, and you got value for money and that was fine surely with everything we've just seen there 60 million is madness i think we'd all agree on that even the most staunch overwatch league supporter must agree on that so um, very interested to see that on this report, which is just from two days ago on PC Gamer, uh, that number sort of didn't get bandied around. And you can see, dis uh, we want a team in Berlin. I'll, I'll read you the quote. We want a team in Berlin. We hold many discussions, and without being able to reveal details, we will have a team there at the latest next year. Uh, discussions with stakeholders have taken place in France, Spain, and Sweden, uh, Velastelica said, although we declined to say which were more, most likely to get a franchise and when it might happen. He likewise declined to say how much expansion teams will cost which is sort of a, a, an interesting move away um you know and and this was interesting as well it was reported but never confirmed the original overwatch league franchise sold for 20 million dollars each a number that blizzard were very happy to have out there and never corrected even though they're saying it was never proven one way or the other um and you can see here vlastelica added uh, that the initial round of franchises exceeded expectations and it is clear the value of franchises in our league has increased since then not sure that is true i, I think actually um it would at best be the, the same price um now think about what those expansion leagues are going to do they're going to have to pick up some of the uh, contenders players and the contenders teams and it's quite interesting actually i i all of this was sparked by me watching contenders and keeping an eye on how that was doing and for a sort of league that is, is billed as being the players of the future and upcoming teams and academy sides, uh, which when you look at, um, I know, League of Legends, when they were having like academy uh, teams play each other, uh, it, its viewership, while certainly not up to LCS standards, did all right, actually. And um, the Contenders League, if you go here and look at the viewership that happened around about that time, you can see, I mean, it's it's had very slight, um, you know, uh, kind of a slight increase between back from, you know, 
March till May, but its peak viewership round about them was like 11,000. And I also noticed as well, bizarrely, there was very little promotional work done by the official Overwatch League to promote contenders. I think when it was on, the official Overwatch Twitter account didn't even tweet out. Um, so in terms of this pyramid this huge sustainability this awesome scene that people are meant to be buying into i gotta say i'm not overly sold so to kind of link it all together in a little bow of what's going on with the overwatch league right now i think we can say that you know viewership's down it's kind of stagnated a little bit everyone's waiting for the end of the first kind of year and and and, and season and see what comes next the hostility towards language is very bizarre and and i think the western audience based on the strategy that we see there with where they want to place the expansion teams i i think being hostile towards a western audience and what's kind of considered the norm uh, in esports culture there could have a very detrimental effect on the overall ability of the league to rally in future certainly right now um when i talk to people you know i still do that i talk to a lot of professionals in the business there's a lot of skepticism still about the future of the overwatch league and this is from people who maybe would want to invest but again nobody has any confidence uh, in its growth despite all of these you know protestations by blizzard to the contrary and again you look at everything that's going on with it right now I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, the jury is still out for me. But anyway, I thought I'd give you all an update on that because I know a lot of you are interested in what's going on with Overwatch but don't have the time to sort of digest all this or couldn't bring yourself to watch the game, which is still a bit of a nightmare to spectate. Um, so I hope that's been illuminating. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.